Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. This is Season 5, Episode number 46, Songs Edition. Andy, how are you? Doing good. How about you? Good. It's September 19th, 2024. We're rolling on with our weekly Thursday night September soundtracks theme for the month of September. First time we've ever done it. Our album reviews are all soundtracks this month. The month of September. It happened to be all 80s movies this month. Next year we might broaden our horizon. Might be 60s, might be 90s. Yeah, let's take it. 90s soundtracks all suck. Let's take it. No, no, yes. Well, we're here. Well, we're here to educate, um, not push our personal opinions. So maybe we'll do a lot of soundtracks that we don't even like. Just right. We don't know. All the surprise. I kind of am today. It was a popular soundtrack. I liked a couple of songs, but to tell you the truth, as we get into this, I can honestly say the soundtrack, I have never seen this movie. I did not see the sequel they made after this movie. Wait, stop. <clears throat> Let's bring it up. Top I Gun soundtrack. Never You've never, never seen the movie? Nope. Nope. I did not know that, Andy. I thought you were a big fan. No, no. no. Wow. No. All right. And, and, and once again, there was no special here. reason why I didn't watch it. It just, the movie just never piqued my interest on it. Oh, okay. oh you know, I just never got into it. So whether you like, and this is for all movies, whether you like the movie or not, the soundtracks sometimes are quite different, and sometimes the soundtracks right. are good, the music that you like. But let's go through Top yes. Gun review and see what it is about it. Here we go. Top Gun is a soundtrack from the film of the same name, released in 1986 by Columbia Records. The album reached number one on the U.S. chart, chart for five non-consecutive weeks in the summer and autumn of 86. It was the best-selling soundtrack of 86 and one of the best-selling of all time. The song Take My Breath Away by Berlin went on to win both Academy Award for Best Original Song and Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song. Hmm. According to All Music, the album, quote, remains a quintessential artifact of the mid-80s, end quote. And the album's hits still define the bombastic sound that dominated the pop charts of the era. And that's kind of one thing, I mean, I don't want to say the soundtrack was the greatest hits because it wasn't. They're all individual songs. They didn't really take all the top song bands at the time or groups at the time. It was kind of getting a good team. They had a lot of the better than average artists. We all knew who they were, but it wasn't Madonna and the Stones and Motley Crue. It wasn't all the top line bands. It was that top of the second tier ones. Okay, and We'll get into that later. My opinion on that part. Um, in 99, the album was reissued as a special expanded edition, which you see the cover there, special expanded edition, with additional songs. And in 2006, it was re-released again as music from and inspired by Top Gun Deluxe Edition. Um, these are kind of like we talked about last week, or a couple weeks ago with Blues Brothers and with Purple Rain last week. It had its soundtrack. There's a lot of songs in the movie that weren't on the original soundtrack. They were just like songs you heard in the background and stuff. That's what they did on these other releases. They put those in there. Um, the uh, special edition, special expanded edition, and for the first time since its appearance on the B side of Take My Breath Away, Radar Radio, uh, briefly heard in the film's final scene playing on the radio before Maverick and Charlie are reunited. Well, you've lost that love and feeling plays on the jukebox. Toto was originally intended to perform the song Danger Zone, but legal conflicts between the film's producers and the band's lawyers prevented this. Hmm. Brian Adams was approached to perform it, but refused any involvement in the film, feeling that it glorified war and, as such, not wanting to any of his work linked to it. Never thought of Brian Adams that way, but hmm. I, I respect his stand on it, though. Okay, interesting. Ario Speedwagon was approached but declined due to not being allowed to contribute any of their own compositions to the soundtrack. Corey Hart also declined, performing, preferring to write and perform his own compositions. Eventually, the film's producers agreed that Danger Zone would be recorded and performed by Kenny Loggins, who for a run here in the 80s, Kenny Loggins was Mr. Soundtrack. Okay. Yep. You know, 
Um, it would do a special thing on just Kenny Loggins one day in soundtracks. Oh, okay, that'd be a good idea. You know, uh, you, uh, you know, Caddyshack did this one. Uh, Footloose, he, you know, he was Mr. 80's soundtrack. Members of Toto also wrote and intended to perform a song called Only You that would have been used in the film's love scene or love themed instead of Take My Breath Away, but legal conflicts prevented doing so. The motels were originally considered to perform Take My Breath Away, and a demo version existed in the 20, 2001 compilation. So as you can see here, it doesn't sound like it'd be that popular. They could get anyone to be on it. And, wow. it and again, we continue with the we're here to educate part. Are you sitting down? Yes, yes. Judas Priest was also approached to allow their song Reckless in the film, but declined when the proposed contract stipulated that the filmmakers have exclusive rights to the song, which would have which the band was omitting the song from their forthcoming album, Turbo. Former Jewish priest guitarist K.K. Downing later called their opting out of the film a big mistake. The band offered the producers mm -hmm. three other songs for the soundtrack, all which were, reject were rejected. ABC members Mark Fry and Mark White were invited to see the director's rough cut version of Top Gun in 86. They were looking to offer a few British band soundtrack opportunities. Mark and I weren't impressed with the film and chose not to contribute any music to it. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. And it goes to number one on the charts five times. <clears throat> five, like, two, I mean, like Bobby Blotzer of Rat proposed using the song Reach for the Sky, an outtake from Rat's 1984 album Out of the Cellar. Although the rest of the band seriously considered the idea, they declined under the belief that their longtime fans would not like the song and would accuse the group of selling out. Okay, although that song, makes sense. Although the song title Reach for the Sky would become the title of the band's 88 album, the track itself was never officially released. The Cars song Stranger Eyes from their 84 album Heartbeat City was featured in the earlier teaser trailer of the film, but it was absent from the film's final cut. So we just name dropped how many great bands from the 80s that weren't on here. For whatever reason, you know, and still look how still look how good the soundtrack did. You know, I mean, it's holy cow! It, it's what I like to hear about these stories that I, you know, I don't know ahead of time. I'm, I'm listening, I'm hearing yeah. it from you here. Is all the contractual obligations and things back and forth to get on or off the album, and whether yeah. to submit a new song, uh, a new original song, uh, an existing song. And they're worrying about their fan base and everything else. And what's the purpose of the movie? Sure. What's the so, topic of the movie? So let's maybe not do that. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Someone else wrote it. You sing it. No, I only sing my own stuff. You know, and the Brian Adams, he didn't want to glorify war. I kind of get that. I, I, I really do. I respect them for it. You know, so mm -hmm. here we go. Here's the songs, writers and performers. Not a lot of these are uh, originals. Um, Danger Zone, performed by Kenny Loggins. And also playing with the boys by Kenny Lyons. Cheap Trick with Mighty Rings. Lead Me On by Tina Marie. And Berlin with Take My Breath Away. The other side, Hot Summer Nights by Miami Sun Machine. Heaven in Your Eyes by Loverboy. Through the Fire by Larry Green. Destination Unknown. And Top Gun Anthem. Now, if you notice right there, you lost that love and feelings not on that list of the original soundtrack. Okay. We go on. We move on to the re-release part, or the you know the next edition the that we have here. Expanded, the expanded. Yep. Sitting on the dock of the bay by Otis Redding, Memories by Harry Philmeyer, Great Balls of Fire, original version by Jerry Lee Lewis. You lost that love and feeling by the Righteous Brothers. And then playing with the boys again, the dance remix by Kenny Loggins. I'm pretty sure the dance remix, he just let the producers do stuff. I don't picture Kenny doing too much on that. And then in the 2006 special expanded edition, You Can't Fight can't fight This Feeling by Argo Speedwagon, Broken Wings by Mr. Mister, The Final Countdown by Europe, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now by Starship, and The Power of Love by Jennifer Rush. Not the Huey Lewis in the version news version. Okay. There was another song called Power of Love by Jennifer Rush. Not to be confused with Huey Lewis and the News' version. So there you go. Great album. 
lots of good songs on it. You know, um, I'm a big Kenny Loggins guy. So back to the Loggins Messina days. Um, so I'm okay with what they did. That was Kenny's thing. He wrote songs. He'll sing songs. He, he, he was pretty open. Now, um, Harold Faltermeyer, kind of similar, right? Was in a bunch yeah. of soundtracks. Yeah, just sure. You want me to play? Cool. It's a check. You know, um, not that Ken, and Kenny Loggins did it. I love him music, not for the money. I mean, that's one thing I've always respected about Kenny Loggins, too. He was just a neat guy, like that cool guy. Hmm. Um, but you look at all those names that turned down. Turn, I mean, and it was still worked out good for their, all their careers. And then no one was like, huh, he would be on top run. And the producers all called them blacklisted somebody. They no, okay, fine. You want to be it? That's cool. We're good with that. So there you go. Top Gun, 1986. Uh, five weeks is not number one on the charts. Not consecutive though, because it was probably Danger Zone had it for a few weeks. Take My Breath Away had it for probably three or four weeks. Moved it back up there. You see, albums sometimes do that. They'll uh, be on the charts and they go down. Then they release the second song. Oh, it goes back up again. You know. Um. Again, I've never seen the movie, so it just shows you that you can still enjoy the soundtrack without liking the movie. So, and you've heard That's that amazing. a lot about a lot of things. People are like, "Well, that movie was terrible, so I didn't get the soundtrack." But wait, you don't know, or vice versa. I love the soundtrack when I watch the movie, and then the movie blows. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, interesting fact, and the fact that once again during this year, what eighty six, yep. there was also so much good music out there yes and this still tops the charts five times uh, a soundtrack yeah. movie soundtrack now l- let me just make it clear when i say i've never seen it doesn't mean it's a bad movie the movie did very well in the box office oh yes and both this and that one both did well because again how many times we've we seen where one does good and the other does terrible i mean we're kind of picking ones this month where they both did good so you, you know blues brothers purple rain this and another album for next week Surprise, um, a surprise well, it's been bold you know maybe next time or other specials do like hey yeah y'all love this movie did you ever listen to the soundtrack it was really good one little tidbit one i'm gonna give you on this um back in the early 80s a friend of my cousin's got me hooked on because he was a big soundtrack guy at the time in high school the original i'm gonna say cartoon because we're old enough there were still cartoons and not animation the original Transformers movie. Okay. That soundtrack was incredible. Really? See, I never would have guessed that. And, and okay. this is from a rock guy at the time, mullet, everything else. Great soundtrack. Now, I do recall one of the first, when I got into music as a teenager, as, a, as an early teen, one of, one of my most influential music that got me in was a soundtrack. It was the Miami Vice soundtrack. Yes. You know, Jan Hammer. Yep. And it got me into music with all these things. And um, I have to say it was the soundtrack once again of the of the series. Now, that's a television series, right? Yep. Soundtrack. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that was the other thing. TV shows were having it. The actors would do songs here and there. Um, <clears throat> you know, they like said the, the Miami Vice soundtrack, which is, was a decent soundtrack. If, if that was your music genre. Um, the thing I liked about that one is they didn't try to fake it up. by like, oh, let's get this group and that group. No, that's not your target audience for that show. So don't waste your time. Yeah. How it's all marketed and branded to get the right demographic. Uh, very interesting. But yes, Judas Priest was um, proposition, you know, to bring to, to propose to do a song. Uh, and that one particular song too. Yep. And they said, no, we, we've got that bookmark for our upcoming album. And they said, well, if it go, if you can't put it on the album then if, if, if you put it on our soundtrack, well, they're like, okay. And at the work. time I could see their point. Cause it's like, Hey, that's our album or our song. We want our album. We want to make the money on it. Well, no, if you put it in this album, you'll get some money, but the movie company gets more, obviously. That's the risk. You still didn't know how the the soundtrack would do. You didn't know how the movie would do. You don't want to make all the money from that song, not 10% from that song. But they boy, those more those who were on the soundtrack, not knowing it was going to take off that big, still getting these royalty checks right. uh, to this day. Yeah. Mike. This day I suppose with, with the second movie coming out, I'm sure this first soundtrack started getting replayed a lot too. You know, Kicked in the gear a second time round too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so that was the soundtrack. Now we've got some local, local, local stuff. News. Yes, and I'd like to get 
uh, some of your input on this, Andy. 10,000 right. Days, a tribute to Tool, mm -hmm. uh, is coming on. I just saw this, you know, January 18th, they've announced for 2025, doing an album, the a Anima uh, album, full album, back, from the back. From the back, back. Now, are more bands doing this? I, I, bands? I think Queen of the Reich started something big there. I think Beth was on to something. She's such a trendsetter, you know. You know, Beth did that with uh, Queen of the Reich, and uh, they did Operation Minecraft. Mind you know, and for this, <clears throat> for these albums, why not? In a way, if it's a good album and it's more than a thirty-five minute album, you can do the smaller venues like this. You know, um, I, I got no problem with it. I, I like it. You know, it's an interesting thing. These guys are one of the best, by the way. Too, if you like Tool, uh, Ten Thousand Days is jackpot these guys very good now check this out tommy cash younger brother johnny yeah johnny's younger brother tommy dies at 84 um big supporter of the genre um yes country. he still was up to the end there yeah another person died tito the oldest the eldest of the jackson five tito jackson. I, always thought, I always thought randy was older okay i always did for some i think because i think randy was the one who played the guitar so i always thought he was the oldest one as a kid. Okay. Now back to this is now this is a different ad now, but 10,000 days and yeah. tool with special guest Seattle rain at Bogarts. Yeah. Now, Andy, this might be one I've got to get to. I haven't been to Bogarts. I've seen 10,000 days. I've seen Seattle rain. I really want to see them both again. This might be one to go. It's an eight o'clock show, October 4th over there in Apple Valley. Bogarts is from what I'm hearing, very similar to the Shakopee Bowl in the way that they promote yeah. their music and their tribute bands. Um, they're both bowling alleys with great venues for music, and they really focus in on the tribute bands. And mm -hmm. um, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see how that. Uh, how that I have not out. heard a bad word about Bogarts. Of course, a lot of these bands keep going back there, kind of like Shakopee Bowl, so they're good. And if this is your wheelhouse, you got two bands from that same grunge era there, Seattle Sound era. It'd be a great I night. Know. Very interesting. And now check this out. Now, I thought this would be interesting. Uh, all my rowdy friends. This is the Hank Williams Jr. Tribute Band, which I think is a great name, right. a, a great concept, along with the name. Everyone gets, you say, all my rowdy friends, and Hank, you're not going to have to Hank explain Jr. what this tr uh, tribute band is. Uh, this would be very good. Uh, I'm a fan. I'm not a big fan, but I think this would be a good show. For those who really like it, this would be awesome. Everyone's yeah. in the middle of the songs, all the music. This is Friday, November 22nd. Is this after Thanksgiving or this is the weekend prior to Thanksgiving? Uh, I think it's before I don't, the way it, I don't know the way it falls this year. I could look it up here. We can get I our, got it real quick here. Hold intern, on. Our intern could look it, it up. It is the weekend before Thanksgiving. Okay, so Friday night before. It's not Black Friday, but it's all my roadie friends at the Medina Entertainment Center. Yes. And so let's see. I don't, I don't know if I missed that, one. That's all of them. I think that's what you got. Here we go. This is the one I missed. Classic rock band to stop touring due to, quote, irreconcilable differences, Andy. This is REO Speedwagon. Now, how old are these guys? I know, but it breaks my heart. I love Kevin, the lead singer. One of my favorite bands growing up, one of my first rock bands I started liking. Kiss. But, stop touring. <laughs> these guys break up. I, I, think, I can't take it, Dan. Now, you know, back in the day, it's it's one thing, but now they're touring. They're all in their, I'm assuming, 70s. Yep. Is this really that big of a crushing blow? I don't think so in the big spectrum of things. It's not a big deal. They were just playing, once again, the casinos tour anyway, right? And I, know and I don't know about like their lineup. But how many of these bands like this, you go back to, you know, their earlier albums. You, know, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Those albums. Is this the same band? Is it like three guys and original guys others filled in? I have not followed their career enough to know that. I could see they broke up. They won't go by the name Ariel Speedwagon, but I could see Kevin Curran still touring, doing stuff here and there. Or like he was. I can see did, that. Sure. He did duets with Polly on her album. He's done other stuff. I could see him still doing that. The thing I'm curious of on this group with them breaking up or ending like this, if Kevin had gone out and tour, the lead singer, could he still do their songs? I don't know who's got copyrights on all that. Yeah, it could be writer, I'm sure he can, but do they still get a check afterwards? Will they still get 
it could be a big legal jackpot to be an attorney on one of these sites. Kind of like Journey with their old stuff with all their issues. It's a, it's a mess. Uh, you know, they're in their 70s. Yes, I don't know if it's going to be a big impact if they're breaking up or not. But Do I still but like the man? It yeah. It's still newsworthy. Yep, yep. And that's all I've got. That, that's that. I saw a tidbit the other day. I'll bring it up here. I was going to bring it up next week. I'll bring it up now. Aerosmith. One of their songs, uh, was it Love in an Elevator, I think. Let me double check real quick. Okay. You know, I, you know I hate giving out bad information. We never do that. No, no. We may not know what we're talking about, but we give out good information. Let me see here. Part and while you're looking that up, uh, remember, beginning of November, I'll be going to the Wasps show at the Minneapolis Fillmore. Gotcha. They're playing their first album front to back in its entirety as well. So, you know, even the real original bands are doing this for shows. I, I've noticed the tribute bands are, but it's an interesting concept. Uh, mm -hmm. If you like it or not, if you're listening, uh, leave your comments down below or something um, uh, on your thoughts on doing just the album. Here's the uh, fact. Aerosmith made more money from the video game Guitar Hero than they did from any of their albums. Really? Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Are you kidding? That's how much cash rolls in on their video game royalty checks than their albums. Oh my. I never would have guessed that in a million years. Never. Yeah. Like, how much more did they make on their video games and albums? Uh, they didn't. That's mind blowing. Um, as the kids would do, yeah. All right. That's, that's good information. All right. So we'll be back next week, our last edition of the September soundtracks. And then we'll be wrapping up the season uh, here with uh, episode number 52 here in a couple of weeks. And we're starting off with season six, Andy. They said it wouldn't last. They said it wouldn't last, but here we are um, plowing through week to week. Yes. People's favorite music. Um, all right. Have a good week, everyone.